High in the Himalayas, at 4,000 meters, lies Ladakh, a cold desert where the yearly rainfall is a mere 100 millimeters. For centuries, this seemingly impossible landscape has supported thriving agricultural communities. But today, the ancient water system that sustained life here is breaking down. Villages that once flourished are becoming ghost towns. The crisis isn't a lack of water, but the timing. The glaciers, which are the main source of fresh water, are melting months too early, vanishing before the spring planting season even begins. But the people of Ladakh have found a solution that's as ingenious as it is simple, a solution called the ice stupa. But if you want to understand what's happening in Ladakh, then you first need to grasp how important the Himalayan glaciers are to life here. This mountain range is home to the world's largest natural water storage system outside the polar regions, serving as frozen reservoirs for over 1.3 billion people across South Asia. They feed major rivers such as the Ganges, Indus, and Brahmaputra, acting like a natural irrigation system, releasing meltwater precisely when downstream communities need it the most. And for thousands of years, this timing worked perfectly. Glaciers would begin melting in May and June, just as farmers needed to irrigate their newly planted crops. The spring melt provided the critical water supply during the driest months of the year. But now that timing is completely broken. Due to rising temperatures, Himalayan glaciers are melting in March and April, weeks before the planting season begins. This early melt runs off as waste, while fields remain dry during the crucial growing period. Since 2000, Himalayan glaciers have been losing more than 1.5 feet of ice per year. That's double the rate observed between 1975 and 2000. These glaciers have lost about 40% of their total area since the Little Ice Age, shrinking from 28,000 square kilometers to around 19,600 square kilometers today. In the eastern Himalayas, glaciers are retreating at up to one meter per year. Between 2015 and 2020 alone, this region lost about 34 square kilometers of ice annually, compared to an average of 19.6 square kilometers per year over the previous three decades. Putting this in perspective, if you lived in Ladakh in 1990, your family's farm had reliable water. But if you lived here today, that same farm would now be a graveyard. Your children would have left for the city in search of better opportunities, and your ancestral land is worth nothing. For Ladakh's farming communities, this accelerated glacier decline has created an impossible choice, migrate or starve. Agriculture here depends entirely on glacial meltwater because natural rainfall is virtually non-existent. When the melt comes too early, crops fail. When crops fail repeatedly, entire villages become ghost towns. Families who farm the same land for generations have been forced to abandon their homes, losing their cultural identity, food security, and economic foundation. Traditional crops like barley and vegetables that once thrived here can no longer be reliably grown. But this isn't just a local tragedy. It's a preview of what 200 million mountain-dependent people worldwide will face as glaciers continue to vanish. The Himalayas are often called the Third Pole because they contain the largest concentration of ice outside Antarctica and Greenland. When this system fails, the ripple effect will reach across continents. To address this problem, the engineering challenge faced by the communities in Ladakh was huge. They had to find a way to store water without electricity, without massive infrastructure, and of course, without much money. Recreate the timing that glaciers provided for free for thousands of years. And the solution was a simple but radical one. They would build their own glaciers. Artificial glaciers that would melt at exactly the right time during the spring planting season and what emerged would become a model for climate adaptation worldwide. Engineer Sonam Wangchuk looked at Ladakh's impossible winters and saw an opportunity. His vision, capture winter's water and release it in spring. What started as one man's solution for a few villages has now spread to mountain communities across the world. Sonam Wangchuk wasn't a climate scientist or government official. He was an engineer who understood his community's problem intimately. He himself had firsthand seen how villages emptied as water disappeared. So instead of waiting for glaciers to change, he devised a solution to change how communities store water. The solution that emerged from Ladakh looks like something from a fairy tale. Towering cone-shaped ice structures, 30 to 50 meters high, gleaming white against the barren desert landscape. The name ice stupa comes from their shape. They look exactly like traditional Buddhist stupas, the sacred cone-shaped monuments found throughout the Himalayas. But this resemblance isn't just aesthetic. The cone shape is the key to everything. The genius is radical simplicity. No electricity, no fossil fuels, no complex machinery, just gravity and winter cold, making them sustainable and affordable for rural communities with limited resources. Here's how it works. Villages tap winter streams, water that would otherwise go to waste. They channel it through pipes to a central location. Winter streams flowing downhill create natural pressure through gravity alone. 
no pumps or electricity needed. Engineers tap this gravity-fed pressure by directing water vertically upward through a pipe. In Ladakh's minus 30 degree winter air, the water freezes the moment it leaves the pipe. As it arcs through the air and falls to the ground, each droplet becomes ice before it hits the surface. Day after day, night after night, ice builds, creating a massive cone. This shape isn't accidental. It's mathematically optimized for controlled melting. You see, a cone has the perfect geometry, maximum volume of stored water with maximum surface area exposed to sunlight. More surface area means the ice melts consistently from all sides, not in chunks. But the cone's pointed top starts melting first in early spring, while the thick base stays frozen until summer. This creates a steady, controlled flow from April through June, exactly matching the agricultural calendar that glaciers use to provide naturally. Each ice stupa stores approximately 300,000 liters. Scale that across a single village, and communities can serve up to 10 million liters annually, enough to irrigate 25 acres of land. And the construction of these ice monoliths is a village-wide effort. Teams dig channels, lay pipes, and monitor the freezing process throughout winter. This isn't just about water storage. It's about communities taking direct action to ensure their own survival. The economic impact, however, extends far beyond just survival. Communities now expand cultivated land, diversify crops, and grow cash crops like vegetables and fruits that were previously impossible. This generates surplus for market sale, not just subsistence. The ice stupas themselves have also become an unexpected tourist attraction. The annual Ladakh Ice Climbing Festival draws visitors from around the world, providing new income streams for local youth who serve as guides and instructors. This ecotourism revenue helps communities invest in further water infrastructure improvements. But most importantly, ice stupas have reversed the trend of village abandonment. Communities that were on the verge of becoming ghost towns now have renewed hope for their agricultural future. Young people who might have migrated to cities are staying to participate in this innovative approach to climate resilience. The success in Ladakh proves something crucial. Climate adaptation doesn't require high-tech solutions or massive investment. Sometimes the most powerful innovations come from combining traditional knowledge with creative engineering and letting communities build their own path forward. What began as a desperate attempt to save a few villages in Ladakh has now captured global attention as a scalable solution for mountain communities worldwide. The expansion within the Himalayas happened rapidly. From the first experimental ice stupa in 2015, the project has grown to encompass 50 villages across the region. In peak seasons, up to 19 to 20 villages participate simultaneously, creating a network of artificial glaciers that collectively store tens of millions of liters of water. But this isn't just about individual village success stories. It's about proving that low-tech, community-driven solutions can address the impact of climate challenges at scale, and that the lessons learned by one community can help other communities with similar challenges. Today, other mountain regions have begun adapting the ice stupa technology to their specific conditions. The Swiss Alps saw the construction of Europe's first ice stupa, demonstrating that the concept works beyond the unique conditions of Ladakh. While in South America, Chile has launched pilot projects in its mountainous regions, where communities face similar challenges with glacier retreat and water scarcity. Pakistani mountain communities are experimenting with ice stupa variants too, adapting the construction techniques to local materials and climate conditions. As pilot projects have begun creeping up across the globe, the transferability factors are becoming clearer through these international implementations. The technology works best at altitudes above 3,000 meters, where winter temperatures consistently drop below minus 10 degrees Celsius. It's also apparent that communities need access to flowing water sources during winter months, and the terrain must allow for basic pipe installation. But perhaps most importantly, successful implementation requires strong community organization and the willingness to invest collective labor during harsh winter conditions. This isn't a technology that can be imposed from outside. It only works when communities understand the principles and take ownership of the construction and maintenance process themselves. For communities adopting this technology, the economic impact extends far beyond water security. In Ladakh, villages with successful ice stupa programs have seen agricultural productivity increase by up to 40%. Some communities have even expanded their cultivated land area by 25 acres per ice stupa. The ripple effects of these installations are also considerable. As a direct result, there is now reduced water conflict between villages, as communities can now meet their irrigation needs without competing for limited natural water sources. This has strengthened regional cooperation and reduced tensions that previously arose during drought years. International recognition has also followed, with the technology receiving support from development organizations and climate adaptation funds, providing resources for training programs and equipment subsidies. Given the availability of funding, 
Universities and research centers worldwide are incorporating ice stupa principles into their climate adaptation curricula. Engineering students are designing variations for different geographic conditions, while social science researchers study the community organizing methods that make the project successful. But what makes this global awareness of ice stupas particularly remarkable is that it's happening through peer-to-peer -peer learning rather than top-down technology transfer. Communities are teaching each other, adapting the basic principles to their specific environmental and cultural contexts. The success has inspired related innovations. Some communities are experimenting with artificial snowmaking techniques for ski tourism, while others are developing ice storage systems for food preservation in areas without reliable electricity. The scalability question is no longer whether ice stupas can work in other locations, but rather how quickly the knowledge can spread to the estimated 200 million people worldwide who depend on glacier-fed water systems and face similar climate pressures. The ice stupa isn't just saving Ladakh, it's proving something radical. Communities don't have to wait for governments or technology companies to solve their problems. They can build their own solutions. It is estimated that Himalayan glaciers could lose up to 80% of their ice by 2100. And that's exactly why these ice stupas are so important. They're not emergency patches anymore. They are permanent infrastructure that communities are building right now, before the crisis becomes catastrophic. But the implications reach beyond immediate water needs. These projects are creating a new model for climate adaptation that prioritizes community ownership, traditional knowledge integration, and low-tech solutions that don't require massive infrastructure investments. The future belongs to communities that take control. If you live in a mountain region facing water scarcity, whether in the Himalayas, the Andes, the Rockies, or anywhere else, the ice stupa model is available to you. The knowledge is open source. The technology is simple. The only requirement is a community willing to build it. Ladakh didn't wait for a solution to arrive. They created one. And now, so can you.